Hi hello welcome back so today we will be seeing about anatomy of endocrine system this is also an important uh, system like um, which you can choose to talk about at the time of interview so when you when you go for an uh, medical coding interview you should be prepared with all the systems it's not like you should specifically choose one or two systems and go it's not like that you have to prepare all the anatomy system and you have to make uh, at least 60 points 60 points so that you can nearly talk about 2 minutes for the system so that it will be like uh, on the satisfactory side okay this candidate know something about that system it will create a proper image about the candidate so whenever you are talking about the system please make sure that you are talking about the system for nearly 2 minutes so starting with anatomy of the endocrine system the endocrine system is a complex network of glands and organ it uses hormones to control and coordinate the body metabolism energy level reproduction growth and development and responses to injury stress and mood the following are the integral part of uh, endocrine system the first one is hypothalamus second one is pituitary gland third one is thyroid gland fourth one is parathyroid gland fifth one is adrenal gland sixth one is pancreas seventh one is pineal gland eighth one is thymus ninth one is ovaries and tenth one is testis so these are the parts integral parts of um, endocrine system so make sure you should talk about all the 10 parts okay so we'll be starting with a uh, hypothalamus first so the hypothalamus is located at the base of the brain near the optic chasm where the optic nerve behind each eye cross and meet the hypothalamus secrete hormones that stimulate or suppress the release of hormones into the pituitary gland in addition to the controlling water balance sleep temperature appetite and blood pressure everything is done by the hypothalamus so hereby i have added an image here so that whenever you are uh, talking about the hypothalamus you have to remember the image okay so that you can easily correlate it and you can say after the hypothalamus next we will be uh, seeing about the second part that is the pineal body The pineal body is located below the corpus callosum in the middle of the brain. It produces a hormone melatonin which helps the body know when it's time to sleep. So that's all about the pineal body. In the diagram you can see like uh, hypothalamus, thalamus, pineal body everything is marked and it is clearly mentioned. so that's all about the pineal body so next part which we are going to see is make a note okay like take a notebook and write the things third part is pituitary pituitary gland like often refers to as a master gland the pituitary gland is divided into two lobes the anterior pituitary that is adenohypophysis and the posterior pituitary that is neurohypophysis okay the pituitary gland is located below the brain usually no larger than a p the gland controls many functions of the endocrine glands it secretes several hormones that regulate growth metabolism reproduction and stress response among other functions so you can go through the image like uh, the brain part is given and here we have clearly marked it, uh, in the brain where the pituitary gland is present next comes the thyroid and parathyroid gland so the thyroid gland and parathyroid gland are located in front of the neck below the larynx voice box the thyroid plays an important role in body metabolism the parathyroid gland play an important role in regulations of the body calcium balance so thyroid gland thyroid gland is situated in the neck the thyroid gland produces hormones such as thyroxine t4 and uh, try uh, try uh, triidothyroidin t3 which regulates metabolism growth and development it also secrete calcitonin which helps in the regulate calcium levels in the blood parathyroid gland usually four small glands located behind the thyroid gland the parathyroid gland produces parathyroid hormone 
which regulate calcium and phosphorus level next we will be talking about the thymus the thymus is positioned in the chest area behind the sternum the thymus gland play a crucial role in the development and maturation of t lymphocytes t lymphocytes in the sense a type of white blood cells and the immune system so this is all about what you can say about the thymus gland so mainly you have to remember it is present in the chest area and the main function of it is it is the development and maturation of t lymphocyte t lymphocytes and immune system t lymphocytes in the sense it is a type of blood cell okay white blood cell so next uh, we will be talking about adrenal gland the adrenal gland is located on the top of each kidney like many glands adrenal gland work hand in hand with the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland the adrenal gland make and release a corticosteroid hormone and epinephrine that maintains the blood pressure and regulate metabolism the adrenal gland produces several hormones that regulate stress response and metabolism electrolyte balance and blood pressure the adrenal cortex secretes cortisol aldosterone and the sex hormone example testosterone estrogen while the adrenal medulla secretes the adrenaline epinephrine and noradrenaline nor epinephrine so that's all about adrenal gland next we have to talk about the pancreas the pancreas is located across the back of the abdomen behind the stomach the pancreas play a role in the digestion as well as hormone production hormone produced by the pancreas include insulin and glucagon which regulate level of blood and sugar apart from its role in digestion the pancreas also function as endocrine gland it produces hormones such as insulin glucagon and somatostatin which regulate the blood glucose uh, level and metabolism so whenever you are reading about the topic now please go through that image also so that it will help you to uh, remember the points very easily so that's all about the pancreas next we have to talk about the ovary a women ovaries are located on both sides of the uterus below the opening of the fallopian tubes fallopian tube the tube that extends from the uterus to the ovaries in addition um, uh, to, in addition to the containing the egg cell necessary for reproduction the ovaries also produce estrogen and progesterone in female the ovaries produce hormones such as estrogen and progesterone which regulate the menstrual cycle fertility and secondary sexual characteristics so that's all about uh, ovary which you can say and next finally we will be talking about the testes you can make a note of this and finally testes a man's testes are located in a pouch that hangs suspended outside the male body the testes produce testosterone and sperm in male the testes produce testosterone which regulates sperm production fertility and secondary sexual characteristics that's all about um, like uh, we have gone through all the parts of uh, endocrine system like starting from hypothalamus and ending with uh, uh, testes so make sure you are taking all the points regarding this notes and then finally we have to talk about the disease conditions which are related to the endocrine system so adding up those points also will help you to give a elaborated discussion about the system for nearly 2 minutes so finally the common conditions are first one is diabetes mellitus and second one is hypothyroidism third one is hyperthyroidism so in case of diabetes mellitus we have type 1 and type 2 hypothyroidism uh, in the sense the thyroid gland does not produce enough thyroxin hormones so it leading to the symptom of fatigue weight gain cold intolerance dry skin depression etc hyperthyroidism is opposite to hypothyroidism it occurs when the um, thyroid gland produces excessive amount of thyroid hormone symptoms include weight loss rapid heartbeat sweating anxiety tremors and heat intolerance 
so the next uh, system like condition which is related to the endocrine system is graves disease graves disease is a autoimmune disorder that causes hyperthyroidism it is characterized by the production of antibodies that stimulates the thyroid gland to produce excess thyroid hormone okay so the symptoms include a goiter weight loss and fatigue cushion syndrome in the sense the body is exposed to high level of hormone that is cortisol for a extended period this can be due to various factors including over production of cortisol and adrenal gland so the symptoms include thinning of skin easy bruising muscle weakness and high blood pressure next comes addison disease it occurs when the adrenal gland do not produce enough cortisol and sometimes aldosterone symptoms include fatigue weight loss low blood pressure salt craving and darkening of the skin next comes hyperparathyroidism this involves over production of parathyroid hormone in the by the parathyroid gland leading to elevated calcium level in the blood and symptoms include fatigue weakness kidney stone bone pain and digestive issue hypoparathyroidism when the parathyroid gland do not produce enough um enough uh, parathyroid hormone resulting in low calcium level the symptoms include muscle cramp tingling sensation seizures and abnormal heart rhythm polycystic ovary uh, syndrome is a hormonal disorder that affect women reproductive age it is characteristics of hormonal imbalance uh, mainly irregular periods ovarian cyst and symptoms such as acne hirsutism that is excessive hair growth and infertility acromegaly uh just uh, go through what is acromegaly okay so thank you so much for watching my video and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and if you have any doubts please do put it as a comment also thank you so much for watching my video wish you all the best for your interview don't forget to take a note and uh, mark all those things so that it will be really helpful at the time of interview for preparation thank you so much take care bye bye